It is amazing what a single photograph can inspire. Take a look at this. This image of Maya Angelou and Amiri Barak at a party in Harlem Library for Langston Hughes. This image ended up being the inspiration for New York Times bestselling author and NAACP Image Award winner Jason Reynolds to create something new, his first children's book. Jason joins us now. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Okay, so give me the background on this picture, where you saw it, and then what you thought you were going to do with it immediately? You know, I, I don't remember the first time I saw it, mm -hmm. but I've seen it many, many times uh, in my life. And, and every time I see it, it gives me the same feeling, which is, here are my heroes mm. doing something human. Mm. Right? It's this idea that, like, perhaps as writers, the people think that we're all just serious people. But the truth is, is that, sure, we dance and we laugh and we have joy. And more importantly, I was thinking about how, wow, all this joy is happening in the library as they celebrate their hero, mm. uh, the great Langston Hughes. And why was that important? Because obviously they are lionized in the literary world sure. for generations. But why did you think just them kind of cutting loose, cutting a little rug was important to to end up writing a book about? I think I think what it, what it gave me as a writer and as a reader and as someone who is advocating for writing and reading for young people gave me an opportunity to talk about how uh, our our the biggest misconception about the library space specifically mm. is that it's not a place for fun. Mm. And the truth is, is that of course it is. Like what, what greater trampoline could there be than the library? What greater ball pit could there be than the library? And so I think for me it was about, wow, these people, these geniuses, these, these luminaries, right? They choose to have fun and they choose to dance, but they choose to do it in this particular space. And, and typically you write for a loftier audience, older mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. Had you always thought, you know, one day maybe I'll, I'll write for the youngest among us? Oh, I'd been trying to do this for 15 years. Mm. I've, I've written many of them. They just weren't good enough to be published. Uh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but yours get published. <laughs> <laughs> and so what was it about this one, you think, that made it over the finish line? I know, it just felt honest. It, it's, mm. it's directly connected to, to, to me. It's not me trying to reach for something that I think is is valiant, right? It's just me trying to express what I truly believe the power of language, the power of libraries, and the power of our heroes really are. What were the likes of a Langston Hughes or a Maya Angelou? What was their influence for you as a child? Oh, I mean, Langston Hughes is the first poet I ever read. Mm. Well, if you're not counting Queen Latifah, right? <sighs> then comes Langston Hughes. And I think first and foremost, uh, Langston Hughes was a poet that felt familiar. The language felt eye level but it didn't lack sophistication, didn't talk down, but it, deal, it did feel like it was for me, right? And I had to memorize the Langston Hughes poem, I Too, mm -hmm, America, mm -hmm, right? I am mm -hmm. the darker brother. You know, I had, to rem I had to memorize that as a young person. Maya Angelou, I remember there was a poem on the wall in my mother's house called On Aging, and looking at it, staring at it every day, or hearing people quote Phenomenal Woman, right? The Cage Bird was in the house, right? We'd, I'd see that book, never read it until I was older, but I'd see that around. And then I saw her speak one time, and the energy the mm. energy of her person pushed me back in the seat. I'll never forget that. Do you think that a lot of the, the youngest generation, are not they're not even familiar with Langston Hughes and Amir Baraka and Maya Angelou? I would, I would assume that to be the, the case, you know, which is why this book is important, not just to shine light on Maya Angelou and, and Amir Baraka and Langston Hughes, but also to use them as a starting point to talk about the greater, the greater thing in this particular book, which is, are we taking full advantage of them they do know, which is the library exists and they like to party. They like to have fun, right? So I'm just using these historical figures in this historical moment as a way to sort of like pique their interest, but also to drive them onto this bigger point of go to the library and have a good time. And so is that the ultimate goal? If you have one hope that their takeaway for the, the eight-year-old who might be reading this book? That is always the ultimate goal, right? Go to the place where your freedom lies. The library is always that place. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show, Jason. I want to let our viewers know that his book, There Was a Party for Langston, is now available wherever books are sold. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.